What's it like to work at a model rocket company? In this video, we'll go behind the scenes at Apogee Rockets to find out what goes into the development and production of a cool model rocket kit. You'll discover how your next rocket is made. So, let's go behind the scenes now. Hi, I'm Tim Van Milligan. Today, we're going to take a behind the scenes tour at Apogee Components so that you can see what goes on when you place an order here at Apogee. See how the order is processed and how it's shipped out the door, how we store things, how we make things. But before we do that, I thought I'd give you a little bit of history of Apogee Components. Um, I did this video originally for Narcon, which was held in January of 2022. So that's the date when our history is up to that point, you know, when the company was started somewhere around 1989 to January of 2022. So I hope you enjoy it. Um, and then when we're done, I'll come back and we'll have some closing words. Apogee was founded by Ed LaCroix around 1989. And I first saw it from an advertisement in Sport, or American Space Modeling Magazine from July 1989. Um, and I rode away and got a catalog. And this is the catalog, what it looked like. And inside you would find all kinds of competition rockets. There wasn't a lot of competition, but there was enough to spark my interest. I was working at Estes at the time as a product designer. But then I got laid off around 1994 and I negotiated with Ed and I kind of took over the company. So this is where I was living at the time. I was living in an apartment and we had the bottom right corner of this apartment building. And I had a little tiny bedroom uh, where I was working at Apogee. And my first products were all technical reports and other publications like my book. Uh, but we kind of outgrew that facility and my wife got a job in Colorado Springs. So that was why we moved up here. And this was our house at 1431 Territory Trail. And I had the entire basement for Apogee, plus a little bit of the garage. Um, and we were down in that facility for about three years, um, growing and, you know, trying to serve our customers. And then finally, I got to the point where I had to move out. Um, it was just too much for me to do all the work by myself, so I needed help. I couldn't have people working out of my basement. So I started looking for a spot. Uh, this is the only photo I have of the basement. <laughs> Um, and this was the catalog, the catalogs that I put out while I was in that basement. I started producing some kits and other electronics. And our first commercial office we got in 1999. Um, and I, you know, went from, you know, a 700 square foot basement to uh, like a 1,250 square foot office building. And this is a video I took at the time. It didn't have sound. Um, and it was pretty low quality because, you know, digital cameras were just in their infancy back then. Uh, my office was to the right, uh, but I was able to hire an assistant who is still with the company today, and that's Michelle Mason. She is our office manager here at Apogee to this day. She pretty much runs the company. But this is what our facility looked like. Um, there was our shipping station and my desk off to the right there. Um, back in the corner, we had a pile of books and some tools that I used to build rockets. And it wasn't a very big facility, but you know, you can see that was the entire inventory that I had at the time. Just you know, a, you know, six or seven shelves full of bin boxes with nose cones and body tubes. Uh, there's some packing peanuts. Um, it also had a mezzanine up above the office area where I could store my own personal stuff. And you can see it wasn't a, a big facility, but it was mine. And from there we grew. Um, the products that we, we developed here were like the Saturn V, which we still sell today, the Saturn 1B, um, the Apogee uh, Blue Streak, the SR71, um, small kits like that. Um, but we were growing and 
I also hired Mike Dorfler at the time, and he worked, and he was the one that really developed the, the Saturn V and the Saturn 1B, and he worked out of his house in Canyon City. Um, this is me working on the Saturn V. But as we outgrew, we looked for a second building, and we actually moved just right down the road, probably by maybe four or five blocks to 1130 Elkton Drive and we had the bottom floor to the right so those entry doors right there by the truck and to the right is was our facility. Um, I really like this building because it had radiant heat in the winter time so it was really nice and cozy. Um, this was my office desk and the warehouse space and you know we more than doubled in size we were like 2500 square feet at this time. Um, and it, in this facility, I worked on kits that were in the Dynastar brand. So we started making bigger rocket kits here. Um, but again, you know, we specialized in shipping and receiving and, you know, packaging parts. Uh, yeah. This was our graphic artist um, desks. You know, we had two people back there. But we were growing in size and we were up to seven people at this point. Um, and I was still producing catalogs. So um, I think this was where I produced our final printed catalog. Um, because we were going more and more towards the internet. And on the internet, you just, you can get all kinds of information into a catalog and it didn't cost a lot compared to printing a catalog. This was the final printed catalog that we did, and it was strictly for retailers. You know, we'd go to a hobby show and, you know, present our products there. So we were growing and growing. And so around 2007, it was time to start looking for a bigger facility. And I found this one at a 1130 Elkton Drive. No, this was a 3355 Fillmore Ridge Heights. And this was our build out that we were doing because we needed more office space than the building had. And I also needed a workshop where I could make a lot of dust and noise and things like that. This was move in day. Uh, again, it was, it was a big event for the history of Apogee. You know, all of this room that we thought we would never fill up. Um, you can see this was pretty much our entire inventory to just fit up against one wall. Um, but we were, you know, filling it out and I hired an artist to paint a mural in the front. And this is the completed mural and me holding a rocket. Um, I also started doing videos in this facility. Um, at first, I started doing them in the back in the warehouse, um, where right now this is the, the shipping department. But I was doing videos right here where these boxes were. Uh, and eventually I moved it into one of the offices because there just wasn't enough room when we needed the room for shipping and receiving and production. Um, I also got my laser cutter here in this building. That was around 2014. Uh, that we're still using to this day. I've had it upgraded since then. Uh, I also built my level three rocket here, but you can see my warehouse there um, in the back of the, the high bay where I built my rockets. And you can see, you know, the back, you know, we were filling it up pretty fast, faster than I had anticipated. Um, also, this was our front entryway where we displayed our, our rockets that we sold. What made Apogee different from other manufacturers is that we actually build the rockets that we sell. So even other manufacturers, um, to this day, we still do that where other people don't. Video that uh, me and my daughter made, and she's going to give us a tour of 3355 Fillmore Ridge Heights. So I'll let her do the talking from here for a little bit. Take you on a tour. Now we are inside Apogee, and this is what you will see when you come in. This is Michelle. And then there's also a dog named Pluto that likes to greet everybody. But uh, he's outside right now. <laughs> These are all the rockets that you. 
These are some rockets in these boxes that are ready to go out uh, to customers. These are some more rockets that my dad has built and other people. There's another box that's ready to go out. Pluto, come! This is the dog I was talking about, Pluto. Dad, who owns it? <laughs> this is the studio where he makes the videos. This is the room where they have meetings. Now we will go into the back. There are all the boxes. Now we'll show you, these are the rockets that he does not have in the front. Some of them are mine. Loops back here. Those things which my sister likes to play with and put them on her head to see to say she's a princess. This is where they keep all their supplies. And that's Robbie, he packages the boxes. And these are rockets that people can buy. There's a lot of them. This is where Robbie packages the boxes. This is his desk. And then this is the room where they make stuff for the website. I'm back here again. Bye. <laughs> And that was Allison's little tour of Apogee. Uh, there's me in the video studio. But around 2016, you know, right there at the presidential election time, we were like really full. And I was starting to look for a building to move into, but because of the economy, um, it was really hard to find a building. But we knew we had to move, you know, things were just packed almost to the ceiling. And there just wasn't a lot of room for further expansion. So about this time, I started looking around Colorado Springs because uh, I knew that we had to get out. Um, you can see more of the shop, you know, the laser cutter there off to the left in my photo booth. And in 2018, we actually did find a building. It took us that long to find a place. Um, the company that was in the building before us was a restoration company um, and they used the warehouse to park their trucks, uh, which made quite a mess. Uh, but this was what it looked like before we moved into the building. They had this huge office area up front that was pretty much useless because we didn't have that many rockets to put on display up in front and we needed the room for office space. So we knew we were going to have to build out some offices as part of tenant improvements. Uh, yeah, this is just kind of what it looked like from before we moved in. And there's Michelle. Um, she was part of the uh, process of helping me design what we wanted for the facility and office space and things like that. 
And this was our gigantic warehouse. So we went from about 6,000 square feet on Fillmore Ridge Heights to over 11,700 square feet approximately in this building here on North Park Drive. Um, so these were photos that I took before we started the build out uh, of what we were going to, you know, put into this facility. It was basically just a shell. There's just wide open room for lots and lots of stuff. And we didn't think that we would fill this up either. Uh, this little thing right there was actually a paint booth, uh, but I had it ripped out because it was pretty much non-functional. It wasn't really good for rockets. This was our little back lot, which was just full of weeds at the time. Uh, this was the construction. That room right there was would end up to be my video room. This was the office area. You could see just lots and lots of construction going on. And in about three months' time, they had the build-out complete. Um, so we, we signed the contract in March, and by Memorial Day, at the end of May, we were able to move in. You can see, you know, just, you know, all the offices that were built in, uh, you know, all that new drywall, you know, that enclosed new offices. Uh, this was the front entryway. There was, again, we had a, one office added in plus a new reception area put in here. Uh, and this is the that back lot. This is the extent of our property. You know, we just cleaned it up, made it nice so that we wouldn't have homeless people living back there. Uh, this was our new shipping station. Uh, there was still lots of room for products and we, we put in, uh, you know, new light fixtures and we put in a complete new high-speed internet system and ethernet cables everywhere. Um, I also put in electricity outlets everywhere in the building because you never have enough places to where you can plug in something. This is my office, you know, it has a big pillar in it. Um, there are these uh, steel cables that we couldn't remove because they were structural, so we had to build the windows around them. This is a uh, vinyl printer that was used to print our new sign for the building. You can see that this one was a reject, it has a little extra arrowhead there that shouldn't have been there but they uh, printed up the sign and they installed it and this was something that I really wanted because I wanted a sign right on the interstate and so people 25 million cars you know a year go past our building and they see you know space models right there along I-25 this is putting up uh, the new sign what it looks like today um, we like that sign. This is me standing out there in front of the sign, holding some rockets. Uh, we also have a shipping dock, and this has paid for itself numerous times over. Um, but that was before we moved in, and this was the final packing up the old place. Um, this was just at the end of May of 2018. You can see the shelves have been emptied off. Um, and we put everything that we had and it all fit in one big uh, truck, although we had to fill it up a couple of times. And we also rented a U-Haul because there was a lot of furniture that had to be moved. All those shelves had to be moved by hand. Again, like we did in the old building, we didn't skip a beat. We were able to keep running while we were packing up and unpacking in the new facility. So our customers didn't even know that we had moved. Uh, we did it all over Memorial Day weekend. So we had a three day weekend where we could pack everything up and move it over to the new building. So this is what it looks like as of today. So now we're caught up. You can see we got lots and lots of rockets up in the front and we got posters on the wall. Um, this is a little meeting room where we have our morning meetings every day. You can see a lot of the rockets down there in the corner. Uh, those are out of stock. These are our company values, and it, you'll notice it spells out the word rockets. <laughs> kind of cool, isn't it? You can see more and more rockets. I try to get them off the floor because it just makes cleaning a lot easier. This is going down the hallway 
into the back warehouse. And you can see this is our shipping area. We have three shipping stations in the front here, and we got another one in the back if we need it. Um, you can see, you know, all the way to the very back, we're, we're almost filled up again. Uh, and we've only been here since 2018. Uh, another view of the shipping area right there. The aisles that uh, go a long way along the building are finished goods ready to go out the door. This is kind of an overhead view of it. As you can see, there's just you know shelf after shelf and bin box after bin box of all the little parts that we carry plus all the different rocket kits, like here are the, the Estes ones. Um, off onto the right side, there's, there's, there's about two rows of the Apogee kits that we pack. This right here is our the start of our production area. These are parts that will go into the Apogee kits. Um, they take up less room because we go through them pretty fast. These are nylon parachutes, obviously. We, we, buy them in bulk and here's nose cones you know again in bulk balsa wood it's kind of cool that I have my own balsa shop where I can go and if I'm building a rocket I can personally select <laughs> the best balsa wood for myself that's our vinyl printer that we print up decals with this is our production area where the kits are staged as we're putting them together lots of room for that This is the laser cutter um, where we cut centering rings and body tubes and um, fins, things like that. This is production area where we make things like our foam pr protectors and our um, launch rail guides. And this is a mold that I made to make um, the hooks that will go on the strap-on booster kits and those are the the final hooks before they're cleaned up this is my own personal workshop where i develop kits and you can see it's it's a little bit bigger than i had before but it's you know packed to the gills with all the little parts that you'd expect and then we'll finish up the tour here in the video studio which is also where we have still photography and this is kind of what it looks like you know my setup you know lights hanging from the ceiling just like that so i thought i'd show you some of the uh, equipment that we use and the process that we do here at apogee that makes us kind of unique one of them is laser cutting our own components this is um, our epilogue laser we've had it since 2014 you can see here it's cutting some centering rings. This is some really thick plywood, which is why it's moving pretty slow. Typically it moves about you know, maybe three times faster than this, but when you're going through really thick wood, we have to slow it down. We can only control the power of the laser, and right now it's at 100%. And we can also control the speed and the focal point of the laser. And other than that, we don't have a lot of control on it, so those variables are what we use to create the settings to cut the wood. Uh, we also make a lot of resin parts, um, and this is the process that we use. We create silicone molds of the parts, and then we mix up a two-part urethane. Um, and this urethane will solidify, and it takes approximately about 20 minutes for it to solidify. Then it can be popped out of the mold. Here, here you can see we're making some standoff rail guides. Um, this is a new product from, for this year for TARC. And then finally, this is our vinyl printer. Um, right now it's printing a poster. We can do posters and stickers. Um, we like this one a lot better because not only does it print, but it can also cut out the part from the sheet of paper and also do a kiss cut. So if you wanted to remove a sticker, you can just peel it up off the sticker. So thanks for watching that tour video, and I hope you enjoyed it. The purpose of this to, is to show that Apogee is still growing and our history is still being made. And you are a big part of that history. Without you, we wouldn't be around. 
So thank you again for making Apogee what it is. And we'll see you in the future. And if you have any questions, you know, be feel, feel free to ask. So may the winds be light, may the skies be blue, and may all your rockets fly straight and true. <laughs>